I need to uh, recap a little bit so we can link the previous message to this one. We, uh, we mentioned that dramatic scene when, when justice needed to be executed against Adam. And justice, as justice is, blindfolded, called forth Adam. And justice heard somebody stepping forward. And with the sword of justice, justice executed judgment. And when justice opened her eyes, saw the lamb. There was a body dead there. And all of a sudden, mercy had dressed Adam with the skin of the lamb. So when Jesus said, Adam, the day that you will eat of it, that day you will die, that day... In Christ Jesus, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world, according to Revelation 1. That day, Adam died. And I share with you an experience that I have every morning in my morning worship. As I let my imagination wander in the scenes of the cross. And I am the one, Oscar Desiring, that gets the cross and follows Jesus after answering to his invitation. Oscar, are you heavy and heavy laden? And I follow Christ. And when the centurion calls for my name, Oscar Sandy, and lists out my sin. And then he calls, Oscar Sandy Hernandez stands forward in my imagination the reality of the gospel becomes real. And Jesus looks at me, puts his hand on, his sh- on my shoulder, his finger on his mouth, like if saying, shh, they won't notice. And stands forward. And he gets executed. And the, the, the Romans come and put a plague underneath with my name. My day of birth, my day of the day of my baptism, or my, bir- my, my day of death, and the day of today, the 26th of February. Oh, sorry, of January, the 26th of January, sorry. And I died. I died there. I have died this morning. Then God calls me to walk and live by faith. So in my imagination, I crossed that door, which is the cross. And it was gloomy on this side, but as I crossed over, I stepped into a river, mingled with the blood that came from that cross into that river, water and blood. And as I dipped myself and I pictured myself submerged entirely on that water, as I come up, big hands are dressing me up with this white garment of light, the garment of angels. And there's my heavenly father there. Now, as I look back, I see the cross. But it's not gloomy. It's not sad and, and painful. It is a glorious beam of light, which is the light behind me. And my Heavenly Father tells me, Oscar, I love you. Father, would you give me a new heart? He taps on his, we we spoke about it before, he taps on his his chest and then with his hand, he taps on my chest and he quotes a scripture. A new heart I give unto thee. Father, would you give me your spirit? And he quotes a scripture and says, I am more willing to give you my spirit, that a good father is willing to give good gifts to his children. And he does this. And I see his spirit coming through my nostrils. And I become a living being in his eyes, in his image. Do you know that every day is a sunny day? Because the just shall live by faith. And friends, we have not understood it. I see Christians living in the ugly side 
of the cross. Never crossing over the world of faith that Christ so much wants to give it to us. The title of this message is, is called Safe By. Now if I ask you this question, we are safe by? Everybody says grace. We are saved by grace, that's in Ephesians 2, 8, and then it says, through faith. So, we are saved by grace, that's the mechanism, through faith. Now, the mechanism is grace. Grace means an unmerited favor. We don't deserve this. We don't deserve that when our, co our, our name is called, the one that steps forward... Stops us, looks at us with love and say, shh, don't say anything. They won't notice. The Roman looks at his face and said, Oscar, you are a sinner. And I'm standing behind and the Roman is talking to him. But he's using my name. He's taking on my name. He's, talking on, he's taking on my punishment. And he doesn't say, <clears throat> you got a legislation mistake here? administration mistake i am not oscar i'm in fact jesus christ the lord of glory it doesn't say anything oscar because of your sin you've been crucified i don't deserve this friends i am alive today the world is life is alive today because jesus died that day because paul says this i reckon and consider this if one died for all, then all died. So how is it that we all are alive here and can stand? How is it that the world is there when they don't recognize Jesus Christ? Because when Jesus died, all died, and their sins were not imputed upon them, so they could actually have the chance to be Born on this earth. And the time that has been allocated to every human being on this earth is a time when Jesus is inviting us to accept that is change by something that is reality, which is walking by faith. Why is the world lost? Because they don't walk by faith, they walk by reality. Of this world. Is faith real? Yes. Is the world of faith real? Yes. Now, there's a story in the Old Testament. This army is surrendering the, the, the city of Samaria. And there's a prophet there, Elisha. And Elisha is quite calm. But his servant is very worried. Because he sees all this army around the city. And he runs to the prophet Elisha and said, Elisha, we doom. And Elisha goes, come with me. Lord, will you allow him to see what I see? And all of a sudden, God opens the eyes of the servant. And what does he see? An entire army of angels all around. Were they there before? Yes, they were. What was the problem? The servant was not able to see the round of faith, the round of true reality in Christ Jesus. Remember, his kingdom is not of this world. How is it that we Christians endure only this world when the Lord has invited us and called us to his kingdom? Thou kingdom come. Today, today, the kingdom of God is at hand. If you grab the hand of the kingdom of God, do you know that today is a sunny day? I'll explain. We are saved by grace through faith. And what is faith? Can you come with me to the book of, of um, Hebrews 11? Hebrews 11, 
It tells us what faith is. Hebrews 11 verse 1. Now faith is the substance of what? Things hoped for. Oh, hold on a second. Hold on a second. To have faith in something, you also have to have hope in something. Because if you don't have hope in something, you don't have the skeleton formation of faith. And if you don't have the skeleton formation of faith, you, though you can be saved by grace, you don't believe it. The mechanism is grace, but you get hold of grace by faith. Through hope. And then he says what? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. In other words, what are evidences of things that you cannot see? What evidences do you have of things not seen? Well, the reality is that when my wife says to me, I have, you know, she goes and picks me up from the train station, and I said, um, uh, is, is, uh, when we get home, is dinner ready? And she goes, yes, dinner is ready. What is the evidence of the things that I cannot see, in this case, the dinner? What is the evidence of the things that I cannot see, but I'm hoping for? Her words. Her words. It is His word that gives us the evidence of the things that we ought to hope for, though we don't see them. Did you catch that? It is His word. Now, notice because what we're going to enter into here, into this message, friends, I believe it can revolutionize your Christian experience and take you from darkness into His marvelous light. His word is the evidence. His word is the assurance that the things that we cannot see are real because we hope for and we have faith in them and we are saved by that grace. There was this experiment done, done uh, on two plants. They put two pots together. The plants were looking exactly the same, same variety, same plants, exposed to the same light, same fertilizer, same room, same water. A scientist will come, measure one plant, measure the other. We'll go to the plant on, on my left. And said, you're such an ugly plant. You are ugly. You think you're green? You think you're going to grow? You're just going to be a dwarf. In fact, you're going to turn yellow and you're going to die. Disgusting plant. And then he will go to the other plant and said, you're going to reach to the ceiling. You are going to be so gloriously green and leaves everywhere. He repeated the same experiment. Every day he will measure one plant, he will measure another plant. He will measure one plant, and will measure another plant. He will go every day, you yellow plant, you, you're going to with it away. You're going to... Uh. Very soon, as they started measuring, they started noticing a difference in the growth. A difference in the amount of leaves. Do you want to know the outcome? You already know it, isn't it? That plant over there withered and died. While this one reached where? The ceiling. The hope that we have to have is the hope based on the evidences of His Word. Because what was the hope of this scientist towards this plant? Did he have hope towards the plant? Yes, he did. It was negative hope. You're going to die. What was this hope? It was a positive hope. It was a, 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 a hope of life. While this was a hope of death. 
What kind of hope has the devil for you? You think you you think you're good? You think you can stand before God? You a sinner? You with all the stuff that is in your life, you keep on falling down, you good for nothing. And if that's your experience and that's what you believe in, you believe in the evidences of the wrong type of word. And you are hoping and you will become a self-proclaimed prophet. I'll tell you right now. It really gives me goosebumps when I see little children with t-shirts that says, I am naughty. Because he will act naughty. Gives me good spans when, when I hear parents saying to the naughty boy, because he will become. Because the only evidences that that son can see is not the evidences of his reality, but is the evidences based on the things that he cannot see yet, which is the word of the father or mother that are telling him, you are naughty. Those are the evidences. Friends, will you come with me to the book of Romans, chapter 8? Book of Romans, chapter, chapter 8, verse 24. I'm going to read it for you. Just the first part, the beginning. For we are saved. By, are you reading it? Romans 8, 24. Romans 8, 24. For we are saved by hope. Make up your mind. I thought you said grace before. Let's go to read it again. For we are saved by hope. Which hope? Hold on. Which grace? His grace. Which faith? His faith. Which hope? His hope. We are saved by this hope, by His hope to us. So there's Jesus Christ standing on that cross, and He has the name. Oscar Sandy at the bottom. You know, and when he says, Father, forgive Oscar, because he did not know what he did. He was under the delusion of sin, a slavery of sin, a slave of sin. But then he says something to me also. Do you know what he says? In my morning devotion, when I'm letting my imagination wandering into the sins of the cross, and I'm looking at Jesus Christ that has taken on my name, then he says, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And I go, well, who are them? Who are them? And I turn around. And that's my mother. Is, is that part of the them, Father? Yes. Why? Because I have hope in her that she will become a glorious plant planted by the rivers of waters. Who is them, Daddy? And I turn around and that is my father. The one that the Lord asked me to forgive. The one that the Lord showed Show, uh, the, the, the one that actually abused my mom and, my, and, my, and, my, and my, my brother and myself. I said, you mean them, Father? And I turn around and I see those that are doing bad to the work of the gospel. Those that are crushing down the gospel. Those that are ruling flesh and, and, and devastating the worship of the true God of heaven. Those that are ignorant to the realities. The little ones. The big ones. The very arrogant ones. 
all are there. The father of my friend, you know that one, he's 80 years of age, he's proud as proud can be. Is he part of the them? When you say forgive them, is he part of it? It is part of them. And Paul says the following, Then I reckon this, that when one died for all, then all died. Oscar, I have in me the names of everyone. And it is now your responsibility to bring them from darkness into my marvelous light. What does it mean by, to live by hope? Come with me to Second Thessalonians. Sorry, Second Second uh, Corinthians five. Second Corinthians five. Second Corinthians five. We know about <coughs> I'll get there when I get to the second one. Second Corinthians five. We know about if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation or a new creature. The old has passed, the new has come. But have you noticed that verse 16 says something very significant? Also within that experience, it says the following. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Now, I want you to notice what is happening here, friends. I met Christ according to the flesh on that gloomy side of the cross where my sins crucified the Savior when He stepped forward in the name of Oscar. I knew Him according to the flesh. But when Oscar died on that cross in Jesus Christ, guess what? I am now crucified with Christ. Because when Christ died, I died. I am crucified with Christ. Therefore, I am a new creation. The all has gone. So you know how the all has gone? That gloomy place, that dark place of sin. I step forward to the door that is that, that cross. Now the cross is not before me. The cross is behind me. And the day is not gloomy any longer because I have entered into the reality of faith. I am a new creation. My daddy looks at me. He dressed me with a coat of ro with a rope of light, and he says, "I love you. I give unto you now my name. You are my lamb." Adam died. The lamb survived. Oscar died. The lamb dresses me up now. That's why he says. My sheep will hear my voice. Why? Because he's making us sheep. But he says, Therefore, though I make Christ in the flesh, now the flesh that was crucified with Christ, I know him thus no longer. How do I know now Christ, friends? I know now Christ as a heavenly father. The cross is behind me as a being of light. And now enter into the reality that God wants to give to his people. It's called the reality of hope and the reality of faith. Because grace is the mechanism, but without faith and hope, you cannot be safe. Despite the fact that grace has been already available. And then he goes further in that verse. In the beginning he says, Now... I, I'm not going to look at anyone else around me according to the flesh. But according to what? To the Spirit. So in other words, I am not going to look at anyone else according to the gloomy, dark place which is on my flesh. I'm going to look at everyone else according to what? According to the Spirit. So in other words, in that place of faith where Jesus wants to take us, in that reality, it's a sunny day, always. And I'm going to look at everyone from that place, not from the place of gloominess. 
No, as the cross is gloomy before me, but as the cross is behind me, as the light behind me. And I am surrendered with my heavenly Father and surrendered with the angels. Can you see the angels? I can. But no, with these eyes, these eyes blind me. I don't want to be like the Pharisees. They have eyes, they have ears, but they can't see and they can't hear. Can you hear the heavenly mu mu the music? I can but not with this. Because I don't want to be like the Pharisees. They have ears, but they can't hear. They have eyes. They can't see. It's like the servant of Elisha. How will I now see the people? So I turn around and I say, Lord, show me how you want me to see my father, my earthly father, in the spirit. And you know, Jesus has the best, latest technology. You know, forget about plasma TV. And in my morning worship, as I pray for people, I pray like this. Lord, show me how I ought to pray for my Father. And He goes like this. And He sets up before me my earthly Father with a shiny rope. And a crown on his head. I'm looking he at him no longer. According to the flesh. But according to the eyes of faith. And hope. 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 I am believing his word when he says. I am not willing Oscar. Not willing that anyone of them. Shall perish. Does that include my daddy, father? It includes your daddy, Oscar. Lord, I want to pray for my dad. Oscar, as you pray for your dad, you're honoring your father. And I have the image of hope, of a reality that God wants to give to my father there. Just recently, my little foster, foster son, little Lucky, is my Aussie son, Australian son. He, sometimes we don't know, you know, we try, it's only, only four, he's going to turn four soon, so sometimes we, we don't know. You want to look at what talents does he have. So I don't know if he's going to end up being a panel beater, because last year he actually got a stone and he went around my car, scratching it. So I don't know, you know, we can see potential panel beater beating, um, we don't know if he was going to be a plumber because we were at church one day and, um, and he decided to get the three rolls of paper and flash them down the toilet and then flash and flash and flash. And when I went to that toilet, wet paper was all around and water was all around. And entering, I looked at him and he looked at me and said, uh oh. oh. So he could also potentially can be a, a plumber, right? He can potentially be a, a painter. My, my wife had this acrylic paint, red. And I was working at the office. My, my little daughter comes and said, Daddy, we've got a problem. And you know, it's like here in Houston, we have a problem. You know, that, that, that didn't sit well with me. And when I went to the living room, everything seemed to be all right. When I looked behind the sofa... It seemed like somebody has killed a pig in my living room. The sofa, the back of the sofa was all red. His hands were all red. The carpet was all red with red acrylic paint. So he could, you know, potentially, you know, we can see gifts on, on being a painter too. When you get that boy drenched in red paint, and pain everywhere. And you have to understand, I don't like messy hands. I don't like messy things. I just don't like it. I just need to wash my hands continuously. What do you do? Well, he says, I commend you this. That don't look at him any longer according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. And you know that Aussie blonde little children look so cute with a crown and a shining robe. 
you're trying to bark and disrespect and pull down a child that all of a sudden you just dressed him up in your imagination, in your hope, with the robes of the heavenly king. He's a prince of God. So you kneel down before him, before him and say, okay, looky, you know that you haven't. And it, it changes your attitude. It just changes your attitude towards people that think wrong about you, speak wrong about you, and do all the spitefully things against you. If you turn around and God says, are you on the side of the darkness or are you on the side of the light? Because if you are in the side of the light, how great is that light? But if you are in the side of the darkness, how great is that darkness? I shared this with a, with a lady a few, few years ago. And she said to me that one of her sons went off to the big city to work and stayed with some family members. Only six months later, the mother went to the city and visit the family members, and the son was not there. He had not come back from work. So the family member says to her, you need to understand that while he's been here, he's just been, you know, no restrictions, he's away from home. He has things hanging in here. Things hanging in here. Things crossing through here. Pins sagging down there, and I believe that he has actually put on tattoos. The mother's stomach just went like... <laughs> Within five minutes, they only needed five, the Lord needed five minutes for that mother. Within five minutes, that son walked in. And I asked her, so what happened? And she goes, Oscar... He wore the most beautiful crown and the most beautiful robe I had ever seen. He came to me and I noticed that he was a bit embarrassed. And I could not see the earrings. I could not see the tattoo here. I could not see anything. I said, son, I am so happy to see you. You cannot imagine how happy I am. Oh, mwah. Mom, let me explain something to you. He said, wow, we can eat now. You, I'm sure you're hungry. Let's go to eat. I mean, everything was obvious. Everything was on the scene. You can see it. It was not escape. The tattoo was there. Everything was hanging. That guy could not pass through a metal detector without blowing the whistle. And the sun... Ten minutes after, he started wondering, my mom just gone blind. My mom, she just gone blind. Has she gone blind, friends? No. Now she sees. Now she sees. Because there's no point of having eyes that were created to see the beauty through Jesus Christ. No point to have ears to hear through Jesus if you are going to just see the earrings and you are going to just see the tattoo. That's not walking by faith. That's not walking by hope. We are being told that many don't have hope in themselves and they're wondering, is there any hope for me? And they will grab on the hope that you have for them in order to be safe. Did you catch that, friends? Many have gone down to a road so cruel and so desperate that they cannot find hope. The devil has been able to tell them you are a good-for-nothing plant. You will never do good. And then they hear you that bypasses everything everything else, every scar that the, that sin has done in them. And you go and say to them, I love you. You are my precious possession. 
I believe that you are going to reach up beyond the ceiling. How far? To heaven itself. A mother applied this to his drug addict son. The son will walk into the house and will steal money from mom to buy drugs. And, you know, and then it will disappear for three months. And then it will come you know, ever so skinny and just you know, very not saying anything, not speaking. And mom kept on praying, Oh Lord, my son, my son, he does this. My son does that. My son, my son. You see, it's like you're not know, hearing my prayers. Friends, we prayed after we've been redeemed on the sunny side of the cross. And it's the side of faith and hope, not of despair. And when the Lord revealed that to her, the son came home. And she came to that son and said this, friends. Son, you are the best son I could have ever imagined for me. And the son went like this. Oh, don't say that, mom. Son, God does not make mistakes. He knows what I need. And in His mercy and wisdom has given me the best son for me. And that's you. And I love you. She didn't know this, but for the first time she was seeing that son with a rope and a crown. Mom, I haven't been good with you. Don't, don't say those things. I know that I'm not good. I love you, my son. I have prayed to the Lord. Many times of all your errors. And the Lord has shown me that I have been distrusting Him. Do you know the promise found in Isaiah 49, 25? It says, I will save your children. And you know what, son? He is going to save you. Oh God, that has nothing to do with me. I, I just, God doesn't have anything to do with me. I, I just... No, because he knows. He knows how filthy it is. He said, son, I don't care what you're feeling right now. But God has said to me that he will save you. What are we saying? What is she doing? She's speaking hope. And we are saved by hope. We are saved by hope. And that child leaves home thinking there is no hope for me but somehow my mom just gone crazy she believes that it's still there is a chance for me to be safe and he grabs on the help of the mother friends have you been living by hope I had a friend that came to me and said, well, not a friend, a person that I knew, came to me and said, oh, it's so good, so easy for you to say how beautiful is your wife because you don't have my wife, he goes and says. And I said, brother, let me tell you something. When my wife was this weight, I said to her, you're the most beautiful girl in the world. Then when she was this weight, I said, you're so gorgeous. You're so, you're stunning. When she was this weight, I said, wow, you're beautiful. Then became pregnant and, and she was pregnant. And I said, wow, don't you look sexy with that pregnancy around? And then it took a while to get into, into what she felt comfortable with. And during that period, I said, you look beautiful. And then second pregnancy and third pregnancy, same thing. And one day she said, okay, okay, give me this, I need to get this straight. So when I'm this weight, I'm beautiful, right? I said, yes. When I'm this weight, I'm beautiful, right? Yes. And when I'm that weight, I'm way beautiful, right? Yeah. Well, how can that be? I said, because you're beautiful in the whole spectrum of things. Because I'm looking at my wife with the eyes of the Spirit. 
I'm not looking at my wife or anything else, but the hope that is in me, given by Christ, as she will become. I look at my children as if heaven is a reality. I look at my children and tell them the stories, how it's going to be like when we walk through the streets in heaven. And I let their imagination wander. My children have gone to sleep many nights hearing daddy just, okay, can you see the trees now? Can you see how the trees are beaming light? Can you see the, fly, the flying angels? Heaven is real and is real through the eyes of faith. And now that we see like us through a foggy mirror, one day we'll see face to face. Hope in eight, uh, Romans 8.24 says, Hope is not hope when we can see. Because if we can see it, let's go to read it. Romans 8.24 again. Romans 8, 24, for we, we, we say by, by, uh, by hope, but the hope that is seen is no hope. For why does one still hope for something that already sees, right? So the hope that you see is no hope. So when you see your spouse in the reality of the now, do you have hope? Yes or not? Yes. When, you rea- when you see it in the reality of the now, no, you don't have hope. But when you see your spouse in the reality of hope, and you live by that reality through the day, guess what? You are a beautiful plan. You are going to grow. You are going to get to the ceiling. Your hope has a transforming power. To change your children, to change your spouse, to change everyone else around you. Because they will grab on your hope. Why do I have hope? Because of Jesus' hope for me. When he looked at that cross, he endured the cross for the hope to get all his children to heaven. Now we know. That not all are going to cross from the darkness into the marvelous light. I, own, I already know that. But a friend said to me, Well, what about if you're hoping for someone and then that, that person is lost? Well, wouldn't that be better to hope than to give up and make them lost before? Because even your attitude might have been now a trigger and a cost of that person lost. We letting go of the arm of faith, of the image of faith and the world of light too soon, friends, because of the circumstances. I'm telling my children, God has promised me, my, ch- my child, that He will save you. And somebody came and challenged me and said, what about it when your son turns 21, he's into drugs? And I said, I don't see that. I see The promise is the evidence of the things that I cannot see. Because what I can see is my son on drugs. But what I cannot see, and what are the evidence is that the Lord has promised to me, I will save your children. So when I'm praying in the morning, and I move into the glorious light, I pray for my children, not on this side of the cross, friends, but on the other side of the cross. I open my Bible to Isaiah 49, 25. I put my finger on that verse. And I said, Father, you have promised. Your word is the evidence of the things that I ought to see and the things that I ought to hope for. You promise you will save my children. Now, Lord, I want to thank you because you promised is as good as gold. Your promised is to have, just to receive the promise is as if you are already receiving the gift. I am already living by the hope that it is to come, the salvation of my children. So when I look at my children, I don't look at them as someone, oh man, he's going for the wrong way. So no, no, I have to purposely, continuously send a message of hope towards them. Will they go in the wrong ways and take the wrong decisions? Most probably they will do so. 
But that's only a chapter on this earthly life. It's not the end of the book. And a book that is interesting is a book that takes you through different ways, but at the end it has a happy ending. And I'm interested in the end. I already know the end of the book for my children. Because God has already told me what is the end of the book for my children. Oscar, I will save your children. I have confidence. I have hope. And when they're taking wrong decisions, I see chapters on that book. But I already know the ending. There was a man that left New Zealand for Australia. I met him recently as a dairy farmer. <coughs> left his faith very early as a teenager. His mother died with the hope of his salvation. His dad died with the hope of that salvation. And he arrived to New Zealand for the funeral of his father. And he was lost as lost can be. The mom and dad never saw with their eyes, but hope with the spiritual discernment, the salvation of their son. He was in the tractor in Australia doing silage. And he was going to listen to the cricket. So he knew that channel 3 in the radio was cricket. He pressed channel 3. And all of a sudden, 3 ABN radio came up. Six months later, he was baptized. <laughs> Friends, mom and dad died. They never saw it. They never saw it. And I believe that they live by hope. They live by hope. How are you treating others, friends? How are you treating your children? How are you treating your spouse? How are you treating those at church that, that disagree with you? How are you, try, how are you treating those at work that disagree with you? How are you treating the most despicable person in the world? By the flesh or by hope? Psalm 23 says, Thou prepareth a table before me in the, in the presence of my enemies. What table is that, friends? There's only one table that God is preparing for us. And that is the long table for the supper of the Lamb. And guess who He wants to sit next to you? Your enemies, friends. You know, some, sometimes we read that and say, Oh, that prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And we think, Ha ha, the Lord is going to exalt me and all my enemies will be at my feet. And I will go, eh, 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 eh. It's not what he's saying, friends. He's saying that for the long table of the supper of the Lamb, I want to put sitting next to you and in front of you those that you pray for by hope to be in heaven. And you treated them with the hope that my promise is a reality. In which reality are you living? Friends, I know many Christians that are living in the reality of darkness. On this side of the cross, their prayers are problem-focused prayers. No hope-solution-focused prayers. When I talk about music to young people, I said, where does that music that you're listening to take you? And I want you to picture this. You got a music, glorious music. And now is the perfect opportunity to enter into that round of faith as I do every morning and start. You know, I'm listening to the music, and you know what I am? When it's glorious music, uplifting music, you know what I am? I'm not listening just to the music. That's the background music of heaven. And I'm there and I'm seeing the angels flying. And every time that an angel uh, catches my eye, every time the angels are laughing. And, oh, sorry, the, the angels are smiling at me. They're happy, friends. I've been surrendered through the day with the smiling angels. And that's iron sharpening iron. What do you think that will do to my face? You will make my face happy because by beholding, you become changed. So I'm listening to that music and it takes me there, right? What about if as I am there, somebody goes and changes the CD and it, go, and it plays, plays and we hear, Born in the USA. Oh, 
wake up to down here in the USA or in New Zealand or whatever it is. See, the music, we have been using it also like remove your No, no, no. By listening to glorious music, it takes you to the background music of the angels. And it's an opportunity that I take every time that I listen to music that is uplifting. I just go there, friends. I go there. It's an opportunity to, to see this. And I'm going to share now with you. I've got two more things to share with you. Can, can you hold it? Two more things. Yesterday, we had Tom singing a beautiful song as he closed his messages. Beautiful song. I was there sitting, sitting at the front. And I was, um, I just leaned forward, closed my eyes. Where do you think I went? I went to heaven. And I was looking at, you know, I was on, on one side. I was living my imagination, wonder of the things that I cannot see. But they are the things definitely that I hope for. And I saw my mom walking and dressed. And he, she looked at me and she was crying. And I hinted her that before she will come to me and kiss me, because now we are on this side of eternity, that she will go to Jesus. And, the, and Jesus was there as a high priest to us, as an akin and priest to us. And he was looking at my mom with such love. And he was walking. Out. And Tom is singing. And as Tom, Tom is singing, and I hear the music, I, I actually see the choir of angels just going through it. And you cannot imagine. I mean, he brought me to my tears. I was <laughs> light on just doing this. Because my mom has gone through a lot. But it's like, she made it. She was there. I treat my mom... As a, as a daughter of the king, that's the way I treat her. With a robe and a crown, I treat my mom with hope that I will see her there. I've got nothing to lose and everything to gain by doing so. I've got, I got, well, in fact, I've got many things to lose if I just treat her as well, she's a lost case. Because that will make me bitter too, isn't it? Rather than uplifting. And I just saw my mom walking towards Jesus. And it's like, as every step she was doing, she was realizing what, what price was that brought her there. And Jesus gave her this hug. And then I look, and through the gate, it was my father. He's a proud man. I call him every, every year, a number of times a year. I pray for him. I used to have my, my daddy's name placed, you know, my mom and my brother and so on at the top of my list, prayer list, and then my dad I'll, will be somewhere there. And I actually put the name Jose in it because that's his name. I didn't even put daddy. And the Lord made me to put daddy there and bring his name to the top. And I saw my, my, my father and, and he, was, he was pouring, crying, pouring, crying. And Tom, Tom is singing. I want you to notice, Tom yesterday, last night here, he was singing. So the angels were singing there. My father comes and he looks at me and I hint him towards Jesus. And he goes to Jesus and that man is broken. And Jesus gives him this big hug. He has all the attention. Now Jesus has all the attention to my father. And I don't feel selfish about that. He has all the attention to my father. And then he moves my father and Faces, for my father to face my mom. And they became brother and sister. You know, and they, you know when you don't say, but he's already forgotten and forgiven. They gave a big hug. Sorrowful because of the waste of years, but at the same time, so thankful. My brother came in, same situation. And Tom is singing. Tom is singing. My sister-in-law and my little niece, they came in. And I'll tell you what, my little niece looks so cute with a robe and a crown. She's just two and a half years of age. She looks cute. And other people were coming. And then sort of 
I realized where I was because I was just going. I was in the realm of faith, friends. I realized when I was. And I sort of, I kept my image there, but I became more aware of my surroundings. In other words, displaced. Helen, would you come here? Helen, when Tom was singing last night, and I became aware of my surroundings, I saw you going through the same gate that my mom and dad went through. And you know what you did? You got this walking stick, and you threw it. You actually threw it. And you look so cute with a, ra- with a crown and a rope. Friends, Helen threw this walking stick. And Helen didn't look at me. She only looked at Jesus. And she ran like a little girl to Jesus. That happened last night. The justified, the one that has been justified, ought to live by by faith. By faith. Through hope in the things that you cannot see. His hope for you. A pastor went to the hospital. He's been, he's been asked to do an anointing to this lady that has cancer and is dying. And asked the woman, is everything right between you and the Lord? And she says, yes. Then ask again, is everything right between you and every living being? And she goes and says, Yes, pastor. And the pastor opens his Bible in Psalm 103. Gets the oil. Because the book of James tells us that if anybody among you is sick, let him him be anointed by the elders and with oil. And the prayer will save the sick and will rise him up. And the prayer And the pastor quotes those and thanks the Lord for that promise and puts that oil on the forehead of that lady that is very sick. (gasps) That's her breathing. And then the pastor reads this. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that which is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities. And sister, you have already told me that that is the case. Yes, Yes, pastor. Who heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from destruction. Who crowns you with love and kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. Sister, you believe this. I am sick, pastor. I'm still sick, pastor. The Lord has promised that when your iniquities have been forgiven... He will heal you from all the diseases. Do you still believe this, sister? I believe, pastor. And she is so tired, she closes her eyes. And the pastor goes and says, Do you see how Jesus is placing a crown on your head? She waits a little bit and she says, Yes. Do you see the white robe with light? Yes. Can you see how you walk towards him? Yes. Is there any sickness in you? (gasps) No. What is he doing? He's living by hope. 
and faith. He has promised that He will heal all your diseases. Yes, Pastor. It was in the face of Jesus. Oh, Pastor. He's so lovely. So beautiful. Is it raining there? No, Pastor. It's not rainy. It's sunny. And the pastor says, it's like if it's not in need of the sun, isn't it? Because even the trees are beaming with light. Yes, pastor. He's grabbing you by the hand and he's walking. Can you see the angels? Can you see how they fly? And they look at you with happiness. And the lady is not responding. And soon the pastor hears. Friends, how long is it going to be for that woman? From the moment she was about to grab the hand of Jesus, dressed in a robe and a crown, until the moment that actually happens. How long is that going to be? In the blinking of an eye. And I can imagine that woman in the morning of the resurrection. She just fallen asleep. She just fallen asleep. She's going, yes, I can see the angels. Can you see Jesus with his standing hand? Yes, I can see it. And then, and a split second later, morning of the resurrection. It is true, Pasta. Pasta, he has healed me for all my diseases. He has restored my youth. Because he's not going to be resurrected with that old broken body. And he had put praises for him in my mouth. The justified shall live. By faith. And faith is the evidences hoped for. And you hope because He has given you the evidences in His words. You can't see it, but you believe it. You thank it. You thank the Lord for it. You live by it. And you treat everyone with a robe and a crown. A, a crown. I'm going to tell you, you all look very cute today. Make sure you, tra- you treat your brother and your sister as yourself. Why? Because if you are in Jesus, you wear a rope and a crown. Treat the others as yourself. And heaven will be filled up by your hope as you became the instrument of hope of Jesus Christ. In closing, we are going to actually sing Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. And I want you to keep an eye on this, because when you walk in from darkness into His marvelous light, you are in Christ's hands. It's Him 116, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms, 
leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. What have I to dread? Why have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning. Safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim's way. Friend, not on this side of the cross, but on the bright side of the cross. Because you're walking and living by faith. And it's sunny every day. What I, what I have to dread, what I have to fear. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Friends, that is an experience that God wants His children to have. Guess what? As you observe in the holy angels with the shining faces, as you observe in Jesus Christ with His shining face, guess what will happen on your everyday life to your face? Our faces will be shining the glory of God because we have been in His Presence. See you join me in prayer, those that are able. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, what a reality. Faith, we treat it, Lord, as a dream. Faith, we treat it, the, the reality of the world that you have given us in Christ Jesus. We treat it, Father, as fantasy, even as Christians, as a fairy tale. And we rather live under the reality of our circumstances rather than on the true reality of your word by faith, by hope, and by taking your promise as if we had taken the gift itself. I want to thank you, Lord. Because even in a dreary jail, Paul and Silas, they were singing. They were singing. They were not looking at the bars. They were not looking at the walls. They were with Christ Jesus in heavenly places. And they were singing with the angels. Lord, what an experience you are offering us. And I pray, Lord, that through your Spirit, we will be able, Lord, to meet Jesus Christ according to our flesh. And recognize, Lord, that we need to die. And recognize, Lord, that God so loved us that He died for us and took on our name so we can be sheep of His pastures. And once we do that, Father, once we die daily to that reality of the flesh, that we can actually also move not just from the altar of sacrifice, but into the tabernacle of God, where there is gold shining light there, and you dress, the, you dress us up as priests, and kings with a crown and a white robe. And that will be our daily service, our daily life. And the angels that will surround us, as also were embedded in the fabric of the, of the tabernacle inside, will be also a reality. And we will become aware of the presence of the angels as Elisha was aware of them. And we will become aware, above all, of your presence, the one that promised to us, Lo, I will never leave you, never forsake you. Thank you, Lord, for that reality. We embrace it now. And tomorrow, by your grace, by your reminder in our hearts, we will embrace it again and again and again, from glory to glory, until that final day when our hope will become the reality of our eternity. 
We pray all this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen.